Hey guys, welcome to Cold Antler Farm. This is vlog episode number 27, I think. And I'm going to tell you all about this day in a one take, just one video. And uh, I got to say, it takes a village to raise a Jenna. So usually for these videos, I at least go to the basic trouble of uh, washing my hair and getting dressed up a little bit. Well, you know, dressed up for a homesteader. And uh, that's not the case today. I am literally here um, as myself. No, no hair done, no hair washed, no makeup. Uh, I just got finished with evening chores. And that's Gibson in the background. He's a little excited because he can see deer outside and he's not chasing them. Um, Gibson, come here. Come on. Let's tell everyone about our day. Come here. Hi. So, uh, so here's what happened. I had woken up to frozen pipes. I was entirely out of hay bales, um, based on miscounting. And I had very little dry firewood, lots of firewood outside. But even though it's covered up with tarps and stuff, just being out in the air, um, and being fairly young wood, it wasn't the best seasoning. It's damp. Damp firewood doesn't burn as much heat because most of the fire is used um, drying out the wood instead of just producing that pure, wonderful heat like you see back there. So that was my morning. I put a post up on Facebook, and I basically said, geez, you know, I woke up with <laughs> uh, needing to go out and get hay. I had to get my roof rake repaired. It was just one of those frustrating posts where you just vent, and um, I explained that I was low on firewood, and the pipes were frozen, and I need to get, you know, a hairdryer in the crawl space and defrost pipes. Not real problems, just things that are better to deal with when you're not on your own. So that was how my morning started. My morning started in panic, and so um, it took with maybe five minutes of posting that on Facebook till I saw a message from my friends, the Hoffs, who I met because of this blog, and uh, they came to one of my book events back three years ago, and they've been good friends ever since. They live over in Saratoga, well, close to Saratoga. Uh, a message from Tim Hoff said on my Facebook page, dry wood's on the way, and I didn't really know what that meant. I assumed it meant he might be going through town. He would stop at a gas station and get one of those little, you know, packets of wood you see at gas stations. Uh, no, that's not the case. Within a couple of minutes of posting that, I I realized that uh, the hops are going to show up with firewood. And they did, guys. I had just finished defrosting the pipes where they got there, which involved um, putting a, a duct tape... Um, a duct tape hair dryer on the end of a stick in a crawl space, but I got the water moving again, and I was celebrating with an omelet, uh, thanks to my birds, and uh, they came in with handfuls and handfuls of firewood. How much firewood? Let me show you how much firewood. Ready? That huge pile, can you see all that? That's going all the way back there. Look at that all! That, guys, that is from friends of this farm, and I offered to pay for it, and they wouldn't take any money. They, they don't have fire. They don't heat with wood. They don't have a fireplace. They had just collected it. Uh, Tim just collected it from his work. He picked it up off of his boss's property and chopped it, and his teenage son helped, and they just brought it. And it is, like, so dry that this time of year, if they had a quart of this, they could have sold this this you know, sedan full of firewood for 200 bucks easy this time of year. And they just uh, gave it to me, which is so kind. It's amazingly kind. And I, I didn't really know they were coming because I didn't, I mean, I knew that they might come, but I didn't know when they were coming. So I was there eating an omelet and I was, the house wasn't clean for company. And I, I invited them in and they were just like, Hey, you don't need to, I, I made some, you know, I made some excuse like, Oh, I'm not ready for company. And they said, well, Kathy said, well, we're not company. And she's right. They're great friends. And it was so heartwarming. And, you know, the night before I had good friends over, um, my friends Miriam and Chris and Chris's son Keenan, and we played Elder Sign, which is a board game based on Lovecraft. And I got to teach Keenan all about H.P. Lovecraft. And I assigned him his first book to read, which is 
just something I think he should start reading because it's great literature and it's spooky and he likes spooky stuff, but it's smart. And um, shucks, I mean, friends that were talking books and playing board games and showing up with firewood. And and uh, the next thing after the after the whole morning of defrosting pipes and getting the house heated back again, because um, in all this time, the house was around 40 some degrees. So I got a fire going when the hoss were here. Things are going great. And I know that I need to get hay. So my friend Patty, who you know um, from the horse video, the one, the first horse video, vlog three, her and Steel were going sleigh riding. And how much fun would it be to go sleigh riding? We just had snow. We're getting more snow tonight. But I knew I couldn't, I couldn't go out and have fun when there's so much to prepare for the storm and the animals need extra preparations and I needed to get hay and so on and so forth. So I went over there and she and one of her friends named Kate and me loaded up eight bales in the back of my truck and I thanked them and, and uh, got a big hug from Patty and she understood that I couldn't be there for the sleigh ride. But, you know, how, how wonderful is it that I have this hay bank? Um, I buy hay from Patty and she was happy to help me load it up and take it home. And so all my animals have more than enough hay throughout the storm, and I'll be able to load up the barn again with more hay as soon as the road's clear after the storm up at Nelson's farm. So wood fixed, hay fixed. I already had gone to the store between the Hoffs and Patties to get um, some more grain. Our local hardware store sells grain. Um, side note, if you go to the local hardware store here in Cambridge, you will see that um, Gibson's picture is on the glass bowl of biscuits on the counter because he is a store favorite. I think they are happy to see me because I might bring Gibson in. So I went to the hardware store. I got 150 pounds of feed. I um, came home and did all the storm preps for the animals. So the pigs get extra bedding. They get a whole bale just for bedding to, to bury into. Uh, um, for extra warmth for the storm. The sheep got extra feed. The, um, the goats as well got extra feed. And everyone just, you know, got their normal chores, water, um, you know, a, a body check, which is different than what it is in ice hockey, just checking the animal's overall condition. I cannot believe how fat Monday the Ram is and how fat Joseph the weather is. And Sal's, he's doing good. Um, he's thinner, he's 10, he's an older sheep, but he's certainly not gaunt. Um, I've seen what a sickly sheep looks like over the years thanks to something called barber pole and sounds something like that. He's just an older sheep. Um, let's see guys, what else is going on? Uh, so anyway, the point was, today was amazing. And it was amazing because of the connections and friends I've made over the years and all of them, the Hoffs, um, Chris and Miriam and uh, Patty and Mark Westner and the people at the hardware store, everyone is here. Everyone's in my life because of outreach related to Cold Antler Farm, either the blog or uh, my life here in this town that was brought here because of my love of farming and homesteading. And if you're new to this lifestyle and you're nervous about fitting into a rural community as an outsider, or if you're just um, used to a more uh, dependent lifestyle on services and less on people, which is in no way something I'm dissing. I'm just saying that in suburban and urban America, you don't really necessarily know your neighbors as much. You don't necessarily, you know, go outside unless you're taking the trash out uh, in some urban areas as far as not meaning you're agoraphobic, but just being out in the neighborhood to be out in the neighborhood to hang out with neighbors. Um, people go exercising, they go for walks, they enjoy the outdoors. I don't mean that. I just mean... I'm getting off the rails. The point is, today was a very exhausting day, and I just stopped, and the sun's almost down, and a storm is coming, and I know that the Super Bowl is coming tonight, and I will not be watching it. I will be um, chilling out here, um, doing some writing and relaxing with, well, editing this video, which I hope will just be this one long take, which I usually do a lot of cuts and edit it to be a little more smooth, but today you just get a tired um, kind of rant. But it's uh, it's all with gratitude, and I just want to get the, the word out there of how grateful I am for those people in my life and how uh, everything from the gift of firewood to help loading hay to, um, you know, coming home and realizing I don't need to go out and buy 
a new roof rake, even though the roof rake broke because I had all the supplies to fix it here. Um, all the right nuts and bolts and pieces and duct tape. And it was a strong day of a combination of joy for the people in my life and excitement for the self-reliance I've been building and the happy understanding that self-reliance is a joke. And out here, we are all incredibly reliant on each other. Um, to help each other in, in many ways possible. I would do anything for the Hoffs and for Patty, and I would do anything, uh, it shucks, for the for the staff at the hardware store that I'm on a first name basis with. So, um, guys, I just wanted to say on this Sunday evening as the light is fading and as I'm in the warmth of this fire behind me that I'm really grateful for you guys and I'm really grateful for the friends in my life. And even though today was all a bunch of reactions and a little bit of anxiety getting ready for the storm, that uh, I am prepared, the farm's prepared, the animals are well, I've got a big day tomorrow to just enjoy, um, well, you know, dealing with the storm and uh, getting excited about uh, a new update on Birchthorn and uh, celebrating the news that Cold Antler, uh, the blog, was chosen, uh, the blog and I was chosen as a top 10 blogger by the uh, readers of From Scratch magazine. So if you did vote for that, thank you. Uh, I don't think I ever posted asking for it. I may have put it on Facebook once, or someone may have told me on Facebook. I don't remember. But point being, we won. And thanks. Thank you if you were one of the people who voted me uh, for that. So it's an honor. And I'm excited for the piece they're going to do on Cold Antler in the next magazine. And as it's getting dark, it's time for me to maybe change into some lounge pants and do some slow stretches and enjoy the storm that's coming. And I hope you guys are all doing well. And thanks for putting up with this very long, um-filled, uh, poor hair and kind of a, a rant of gratitude vlog episode. Thanks for watching.